Good morning, AP Psychers. Mr. Galusha here with a video about why correlation is not causation. So let's go back to our roots of correlation, which is to show a relationship between two variables. It's actually in the word correlation, relationship. Why do we want to do that? Because I want to make a prediction about one of those other variables based upon the other. So let's say we are studying low self-esteem, variable one, and depression, variable two. You do the research because you assume the two have a relationship. So we're going to take variable one, low self-esteem. We're going to create an operational definition that will allow me to measure uh, my variable and get a number from it. That's what an operational definition is and will allow other researchers to replicate my study. So we're going to give a score on a self-esteem test for variable two depression. We're going to do the length of your uh, bout or your episode of depression in months. Could be very specific. Don't want another researcher doing it in weeks. They'd have vastly different findings. So we have our two operational definitions. We got our two variables. We can go ahead and uh, find out from a survey, uh, descriptive research with our, our uh, participants to find out how they score on a self-esteem test and compare that, see the relationship to their length of depression. And what we find um, is this score on their self-assessment test. Here you see an individual with you know, pretty good self-esteem, 9 and 10, only lasting uh, you know, was it months, so only one month of, uh, for their bout of depression. But as we go down, you know, someone who's scoring only a, 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 you know, to 5.5 is having four months, then someone scoring only a, a one is having nine months in their depression and 10 months respectively. It's not a perfect negative correlation, but we do see as your score tends to be higher, your length of depression tends to be lower. So we have a negative correlation. We would expect a negative number, and it's a pretty strong correlation there, probably like a negative six or negative seven there, negative 0.6 or 0.7, excuse me. But this, this video here is about why correlation is not causation. Now take a look at this. All I know is there's a relationship. I don't know if the low self-esteem is causing the depression or if the depression is causing the lower reports of self-esteem. I don't know which direction that's going. And in fact, I don't know that it's, it's, it's a causal relationship at all. Because think about it. All I tested was self-esteem and their length of depression. I didn't ask them about anything else. I don't know if it was possibly distressing events that happened. That lowered, uh, you know, made the self-esteem lower, made the depression longer. I don't know if there's a biological predisposition that someone's having. I didn't study those things. Therefore, I can't make comments about that. And if I make a causal comment, if I say low self-esteem is causing depression, I'm saying that I've studied all these other things and ruled them out. I haven't. Correlation is not causation because you only studied the two variables you didn't study everything else and therefore cannot make claims about all those other things. Children with big feet reason better than children with small feet. There's actually a really strong correlation there. Uh, this doesn't mean that if you have a size six foot, you are not intelligent. If I take a look at all of the kids, zero to 18, obviously babies have very small feet. Uh, and then older kids tend to have better IQs because they can actually take a test. So really the thing that's hiding behind those to that relationship is age. I didn't study it, therefore I couldn't make a comment about it. And so sometimes that we can see this stuff, it's really silly when we look at it on things that we know not to be true. But we have to understand that on any relationship of correlation, there is not a causal, and this causes this link. The most predictive factor in the use of birth control was always the number of appliances in the home. This does not mean that appliances cause the use of birth control. It probably means that you have a little more money and you can buy both. And again, we don't test that. Therefore, we can't say anything about it. There's a third or a missing variable problem here. A relationship other than causal might exist between the two variables. It's possible that there is some other variable or factor that is causing the outcome. You don't know this because you didn't study it, therefore you can't make a claim about it. Correlation is not causation. Ice cream sales and the number of shark attacks on swimmers are correlated. Well, that's because ice cream causes shark attacks. No, of course not. It's because ice cream sales go up in the summer and that's when people are actually in the water 
for sharks to attack them in the first place. Again, there's a third or missing variable because you didn't study it, don't say anything about it. So there are two common relationships we could be mistaken for causation. First is common response, and there's confounding. So common response is really simple. The example I just gave you with ice cream scales and shark attacks, the common response is summer. So summer is causing both of those to go up. And that's why X and Y are both impacted by Z. So X and X being ice cream sales, Y being shark attacks, but summer is causing both of those to go up. There's also confounding variables. Maybe X is caused by one thing, Y is caused by another, completely unrelated. And I don't know that because I didn't study it, therefore I can't say it. So correlation is not causation because we didn't study for other variables. Therefore, we can't say anything about those other variables having or not having an effect. Take care, AP Psychers.